Why, you're welcome. Um, and good morning, everybody. Um, this is a, a rare opportunity, and um, I'm really grateful to you for letting us do it. Um, on the 6th of June, uh, less than a year ago, uh, a young man was sitting in an internet cafe in Alexandria. Two policemen burst in, beat him up, took him outside and killed him. Um, what happened between then and the moment that you set up your Facebook page, we are all Khaled Saeed, the name of the young man who was killed? Um, first of all, I, I, I googled you. <laughs> That's never a good thing to do. Find out something about his socks. <laughs> uh, yeah. Listen, I, I just happen to be a Google uh, fan in that I believe in color on white. <laughs> um, so what happened was basically um, uh, transparency. People started to know the story. Um, uh, we all looked at the, the photo of before and after. Um, a lot of us started to get really pissed off. Uh, and Matt. This event was talked about immediately, online, yep. immediately, with yeah, someone, no restrictions. Yeah, someone took the photo of the guy uh, um, and, uh, and sent it to a Dead. bunch of people. Dead? Dead, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, sent it to a bunch of people. And because the photo was so bad, um, mm. everyone was reacting to it. A lot of people just published the photo. I, when, I, when I saw it to start with, I couldn't believe it, and I thought, Something is wrong, and, and I, I did not want to react to it. I wanted to believe that this is not true. And um, after, I believe, 24 hours, or probably 48 hours, I can't remember, um, we started to realize that it's a real story. And actually, someone was killed in, uh, in Alexandria. And when, when you look at the guy, he is, um, he's someone that you connect with. You, you, you can think this could be your brother or young brother or you know, uh, uh, your, your friend, uh, your colleague at school. And then when you look at the photo after, uh, it's, so, it's so bad that it makes any average person angry. Um, so I, I wanted to do something. And I started a page. I, I did not think of you know, that would be a, a big issue. But on the, same page, on the same day, we got about 40,000 people who joined the page with, with no effort whatsoever, because everyone was uh, uh, searching for his name. And the page was one of the top results uh, for search within Facebook and, uh, and within Google. You were a marketing executive for Google. You were living in Cairo or elsewhere no, in the was, Middle East? At, at that time, I was living in Dubai. So uh, you didn't have any sense, living that far away, that this was a dangerous thing to do? Uh, what is it? To, well, I, to set up I, I think page? for an Egyptian to set up a page saying we are all uh, this man who the authorities have killed for web activity, effectively, would be a dangerous thing to do well, and there, easily traceable to you. Well, there are a couple of issues. One is uh, I relied a lot on their uh, uh, lack of uh, knowledge when it comes to the digital world. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to take the guy through a process to get, get him access to my Facebook page. That's a luxury you had here that many now will not have because, of course, these outfits are gearing up against this kind of activity. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and the second is um, definitely I was anonymous. And, mm. uh, and it was very hard to find out who's, mm. uh, who's behind this. And, and that's, that's like a double-edged sword on, on, on the internet. Uh, uh, if, if you have a cause, that cause can, be, can become the carter. Just mm. like how we think of a corporate uh, as, a, as, a, as an individual, at the end of the day, you can sue a corporate and you, you want money from the corporate. I believe that the cause was also a person. Uh, and the cause was, the, was whatever you write on the page and whatever you say. Um, there's, uh, I'm, I'm not that brave as, 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 a, as a normal. I would walk in the street, try to avoid any sort of, uh, uh, I'm not the guy who would go and fight mm. in, the, in the street. Uh, but behind the screen, it's much easier. You don't see the consequences. You don't uh, live the consequences. Mm. It's very easy to criticize or to say X, Y, Z is a, is a very bad person. Uh, but you probably would not do that if, uh, if you have a face-to-face -face conversation. But in January, early in the month in which the revolution started, uh, you're still giving a fairly bland speech uh, in which you say, look, there will be uh, 100 million Arabs um, online by 2015, there's no hint that there's anything else in play. 
Um, well, I, I, I tweeted, I, I remember on February 2010, I wrote uh, on, on my Twitter feed. This is before the killing of... Uh, yeah, that was like a year ago. That, yeah. that was over a year ago. Uh, that internet will change the, the way, will change politics in Egypt and 2011, which is the, you know, the presidential elections, will not be the same as 2005 because of two reasons. One, um, it's becoming harder and harder uh, to hide information. I think politicians in this world, especially in the so-called mm -hmm. civilized world, and I like the word so-called civilized world because they, uh, uh, they're not gonna be able to go, to get out of their you know, uh, uh, double standards. People are, are after them and, and people are actually very active now in, in cornering politicians. Mm -hmm. But am I looking at a ticking revolutionary in February 2010 who no. has spotted what can be done, no. and who, triggered by uh, the death of uh, Khaled Saeed, says to himself, this is our moment. No, I, I, I don't think so. No, <laughs> that wasn't the case. And I, I would love to claim that, but that's not the case. No one have envisioned that uh, we would have a revolution of that kind, of everyone going to the streets. Uh, so, so take me to the moment when you, when you feel that something happened in cyberspace which connected with something on the ground? Well, it was the first silent stand. I, I'm a very peaceful person. I, I, I held a lot of, you know, I felt a lot of responsibility over the people on the page. I never wanted to put them in trouble. And, um, uh, and then this guy from Alexandria, by the way, there are lots, I got a lot of credit that I don't deserve because there are lots of people who were working on the page as well. Uh, uh, but probably because I work for Google, that was uh, <laughs> that was a catchy term for for the media. Uh, the but guy you also from knew Alexandria. A heck of a lot about what you were doing. I mean, technologically. Uh, yeah, but there are a lot of people who who knew as well. So a guy in Alexandria just came up with an idea. Hey, you know, they are banning us from protesting, and they know how to oppress protests. How about we go into a flash mob? All of us go individually, wearing black, facing the sea, our back to the street, and stand up there for one hour. And that was the first uh, moment uh, I personally experienced calling for something online and mm -hmm. getting people offline. And on that well, day... Well, hold up there then, because somewhere around this moment, you get in touch with Google, your employer, and what happens? You pick up the phone, you say, Eric, I'd like a sabbatical. Um, it, it, it's just the wife, you no, know. No, that was, <laughs> <laughs> no, that was, uh, so, so this incident actually was in June 2000, uh, uh, 2010. That was right. after, right after the death of Khalid. A lot of people wanted to go to the streets. Uh, some people were planning protests. We had some successful protests mm. happening, but I wanted to send a kind of different message. I didn't want that confrontational mm. approach because most of the people who got in the page were not activists, were actually Egyptians who are, who got pissed off and they want to see someone brought to justice. Uh, I hated the fact that their first encounter would be in a protest where they, are, well, they will get beaten up and uh, they end up not doing anything uh, or think that you know, this, is, this is not their business. We have a very common statement by the policemen when they arrest you, mind your own business, look after your, you know, your family, look after your job and don't don't get involved in that. But, so, but, but I don't want to speed you. We haven't reached the revolution yet, and, and you're still in June, and I want to be in January. Yeah. So I want to push you through to January, and I want you to pick up the phone to presumably Eric himself <laughs> to say you wanted a sabbatical and why you wanted a sabbatical. Well, Google has nothing Did you say, to do in this. Uh, I, I would actually quite like to bring down the Egyptian regime. Yeah. Do you mind? Could I have a sabbatical? No. Um, so, so what happened was basically after the Tunisian uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, regime fallen down, a lot of the Egyptians, including myself, I was against any sort of like confrontations where a lot of people go to the street. I probably didn't think it would actually work, but what we saw uh, uh, in Tunisia is like, wow, it was just a matter of hundreds of thousands of people, uh, persistence, and they're, they kept calling for one thing, they united. We can do that, we can copy and paste, we can plug and play, and, uh, and this, this was not even initiated by me. A lot of people, uh, angry people on the, on the page, uh, where we had about 400,000 people by then, saying, you know, we're not doing anything, this is just a waste of time. If, uh, if Boazizi, the man who died and uh, committed suicide in Tunisia, uh, was in Cairo, uh, uh, someone from the Khalid Saeed page or the admin of Khalid Saeed page would call for a silent stand, making fun of the idea that silent stands are nonsense. And, uh, and to be very honest, I just, you know, got intimidated by the comments and I said, okay, let's create an event 
I was actually editing an event. Uh, I called it Revolution. I didn't know uh, 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 by that time how fast it will pick up. I didn't have that much of a share on, on what happened afterwards other than you know uh, uh, talking to the people on the page, telling them we have to go to the street. And it was the first revolution, uh, I think, in the history of mankind that was pre-announced. Location was determined. We, we just disclosed everything. Uh, uh, you know, meet, actually, the, the, the design was the Tunisian flag combined with the Egyptian flag and we're telling the regime, see you in 25th of January. We did our best to, uh, to tell them that something is going to happen. I was thinking... But are you saying at that moment that with 400,000 people on the page, or, or these, this number of hits, uh, all members, I think, what you're saying, that the authorities were still oblivious to what you were up to? Yeah, because there were a lot of experiences in the past, including the silent stands, where a lot of people just confirmed that they're going to go down the street, but they never do. It's very easy to say to RSVP at an event on Facebook and, and not join. You're not paying anything for, for not joining. So uh, the expectations were like, we were not like Tunisia. Uh, um, and we were making fun of that. We are saying, yeah, we are much worse than Tunisia. Mm -hmm. And that's why we should actually go to the street. Um, they never thought it would come. They never mm -hmm. thought that the, 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 the police state that was scaring everyone uh, uh, will basically uh, uh, be attacked brutally by, by the people, by the numbers of the people. Because on 25th of January, uh, before 25th of January, almost everyone owned the idea of promoting this. I call it the, the most brilliant marketing campaign in the history of Egypt, because everyone was part of that campaign. And the fact that the page was anonymous, it made no one own. Uh, mm -hmm. No one was an owner, and, and if, if there was like a group or a movement or, a, or even an individual calling for this on, on his name, probably would have failed because mm -hmm. not the, uh, politics will arise and who's going to get the credit, and, and all of that was not there. And even the plan was that we'll keep this anonymous and, mm -hmm. and not disclose the identity of the people who work behind the page. I know you don't like the phrase Arab Spring. Do you like the phrase, the phrase Facebook Revolution? <laughs> no. Uh, so it wasn't? Yeah, probably I like it. I liked it right after I went out of jail. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, <laughs> but uh, the reality well, is, what happened is, internet helped spark the revolution. Most of the people in the street on 25th came to the to the streets. Most of them came through the internet and mainly Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and of course Google search engine. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, but. But, what but, was, but what? most of the people mm. afterwards, it was mm. our role was to create the snowball. Mm. And mm. once the snowball was created, most of the most mm. of the Egyptians who were hurt by the regime mm. started to join and and broke the psychological barrier of fear. What we did on the twenty fifth was basically break the mm. psychological barrier of fear. Well, like the Egyptian authorities, I had not met you in cyberspace at this point. I was in the square, uh, and I'm wondering what the balance by then was by the moment that you were arrested, the 27th, when there was a very big, very, very big manifestation in the, in the square, intoxicating and extremely dangerous. I mean, because there were thugs from the Mubarak regime and the rest of it. What was the balance between the huge mass in the square and what was going on in cyberspace? What, by then, had, had you done your work or was that the beginning? So I mean, hard, had you a... done your work or was there still now a great deal to do online to try to what? rationalize into this into a something which would actually do the job. Yeah, so if I understand you correctly, you're asking, is, will the internet play a role in the, in the, in the next phase? Right? Exactly. Well, I, I mean, in a sense, if it played the big role in this phase, does it feed through to the next phase? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I love all these discussions because uh, when people ask me, did the internet play a role? I was like, yeah, as, as critical as the phone, why no one is asking about the phone's role in the Egyptian revolution? We, we called each other and we SMSed each other. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's just because it's very catchy. Uh, I believe that the internet is, is, uh, uh, plays a big role in mobilizing people and in uh, educating them, either in a wrong way or in the right way. Because I agree mm. with, the, uh, with the gentlemen who are here and who are saying that you can actually use the internet for the bad thing, for the mm. wrong thing. Mm. And you can get a lot of uh, people uh, uh, join your cause, even if it's a wrong cause. Because it's always the case that uh, 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 people will will believe in causes even if they are not the right ones. But before you take us into the but, next but I phase, want to comment you're about in jail. One thing. You're asking so many questions. I know, but I, I've only got 20. 
we got 20 minutes and the previous lot okay. at up at least 10. I hate the word Arab Spring and I have to say it. That, you know, uh, I, every time I read it on newspapers, it makes me feel that this is a temporary thing. They're saying that, okay, Arabs woke up and they're going to sleep back again. I think it's an Arabic revolution, not mm -hmm. an Arab Spring. It's the freedom flu that was mm -hmm. already in, in the heart and, and mind of every Arab who was oppressed by both the regime and the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and the so-called civilized world uh, oppressing uh, uh, the, 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 the younger generations who had never seen democracy in their countries. Well, however ignorant the authorities were about the build-up to um, the revolution, um, they weren't ignorant that you were a key player because they lifted you. No, they or was that chance? Bad luck. They uh, took you into jail. Uh, they, no, it was just uh, pure luck. <laughs> uh, uh, and I think, and I think it was perfect. It was perfect for the revolution. I'm happy that I was. I did not experience those days, uh, and uh, uh, I, I have to admit that when when I when I when I came out on my interview, I liked that comment that one one guy made uh, about my interview. It was like, "Why well, have just restarted 25th of January?" Because I missed all the incidents. I missed what happened in Tahrir. I don't have the same. This, no matter how everyone will describe to me what happened to them in the in the uh, uh, in the Tahrir Square and the you know the killing and everything, I didn't feel it. And when I came out of jail, I decided on going right right away to the TV station, just said hi to my mom and my family, and got on the road to the TV station because I wanted to remind myself and everyone and talk to the silent crowds and tell them why did we go on the street on 25th. And that's why the next day, a larger number of people started to join because they started to look at us as, wow, these guys are calling basically for the stuff every Egyptian wants. And, uh, and it seems like the propaganda, the media propaganda that was going against them might not be true. So I, I, I loved how everything happened. Uh, 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 I don't, I don't want to be in jail again. I was not tortured. Uh, I was not brutally tortured. I was definitely psychologically tortured. I, I never, I was never be able to speak with anyone. I was always handcuffed, and uh, and you know this is nothing to happen to you. I know, but <laughs> uh, I was, uh, I was also blindfolded, and uh, uh, and I never knew when I'm gonna go out. I was always thinking I'll, I'll be killed some uh, sometime. I've got one final question, and then I do just desperately want to try and get just a couple of questions from the um, audience here. Um, this next phase, this yeah. is a critical phase. This is when the revolution makes or breaks. Um, what is the current role of Facebook, of Twitter, of, of cyberspace in what is now happening in Egypt? There are lots of, uh, there are lots of uh, roles that internet can play. Uh, one is you know, spreading education, like creating the viruses, the viruses that educate people about the importance of de democracy, what does it mean, and uh, what does it mean to have a constitution, what are, what are the roles of the parliament members, and all that kind of education is needed. Mobilizing people towards building Egypt is, uh, is important. Uh, I, I also think that uh, uh, the, the Western world, uh, the, the US the, the, and the West will, will have a role to play. Um, but, but is the revolution slipping? No, I'm optimistic, and I and I see where we're going. We've we got rid of a nightmare, and we're still going through phases of uh, uh, problems, which are expected. Uh, a regime was oppressing us for 30 years. A lot of people, uh, um, including the religious people, yeah. were not able to speak up their minds, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden they have all this free mm -hmm. uh, uh, free environment. This is great, and I think all these problems will make us stronger. I'm I'm very optimistic about the the the, uh, the the future. All what we need to do now is to focus on the right problems, and I think the world also have a responsibility because Egyptian the Egyptian revolution should not go wrong. Uh, it cannot go wrong. If it go, goes wrong, it sends the wrong message to the dictator. And, and this is not by dictating how politics should run in Egypt and what is the definition of democracy according to the Western standards. It should be by investing in people, uh, investing in, in projects, bringing, taking more risks in, in the idea of building infrastructure and let the Egyptian people figure out their own problems. Let them do the mistakes, let them fall uh, uh, and, and do the mistakes and learn their own way. And when you look out and you look at Bahrain and you look at Syria and you look therefore at failure, um, do you feel a sense of that you're very lucky or guilty that they haven't managed to make it where you have? Why would I feel guilty? I mean, t to me, what, what we did was basically a reflection of the street. The street in Egypt wanted this to happen, or the majority of the silent crowd who was, who was not uh, uh, supporting this did not go against it. They thought, 
where you know we are going in the downhill, probably that's the right uh, the right fix for it. Uh, every country has its own uh, um, like there there are different things that play within each country. Uh, what I care about or what I believe in is that the dictators are going to have tough times in the in the future. They're not going to be able to oppress their people uh, uh, as they used to do. The media propaganda is failing because the mainstream is becoming no longer mainstream. Even the media brokers, uh, I call the media organizations as the brokers between the people and whomever is uh, 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 talking to them, uh, uh, their role is getting less and less important and the role of individual, user to user, uh, uh, is becoming uh, uh, bigger. So eventually, dictators will have to give away their power. Yeah. And, uh, um, or we're going to live in a World War III. Uh, uh, <laughs> right. Uh, uh, While, uh, one final sentence. What did you tell Google you were going to do on your sabbatical? Uh, um, so you mean during the revolution? It was yeah. not a sabbatical. It was just a, uh, sh I thought it a holiday. was, was going to end in seven days. <laughs> <laughs> I just told them I need to uh, I need to go back. I told my manager, uh, probably he's not here. I told him that uh, uh, I there is an urgent issue in Egypt. I thought what would be the lie that work. And <laughs> I just said there is an, a personal urgent issue in Egypt. Uh, I, I need to go. I had a good uh, balance, and uh, he said okay, go. Uh, and I took time off, and that's uh, that's what uh, as far as Google was uh, was involved in the revolution. Ladies and gentlemen, Wael <laughs> Karim. Thanks.